impact cardio. How's everybody doing? We have one rule at this party. Don't touch anybody's body without permission. Because we need a big C. Big Daddy, you know what I'm talking about. It's consent. Without consent, you're not going anywhere. What I just displayed for all of you is the B-U-R-A-N-B-U-R Burambur. One day I was walking, and this white guy, he came up to me. And he said to me, listen, are you not hot under there? And I said, I don't know, you're going to have to ask Dr. Muhammad Haji. I'm Muslim, I'm modest. I can't tell you how hot I am under here. I realized he was talking about temperature. I thought he meant something else because in the 50 plus lady, I get a lot of clout chasers chasing me. So out of nowhere, even though he was white, he told me something that sounded like a rhyme. He said, this this mother is not loyal. Something like this. I don't know what he's talking about. He could have been not well, I'm not sure. But as soon as someone challenged me, I'm Hawa Haji, I just break loose. So I told him, Wariyahe, Wariyahe, you don't want to battle. You were snug like an apple. I'm a full course meal. He's a Costco sample. I was wearing flip-flops at the time because it was hot outside. So I said, how you let a hoya beat you in some flip-flop sandal? <laughs> Damn, Daniel, I heard you were fragile. <laughs> how I had you too lit like the flame of a candle. I told him I like my white folk, I mean my egg yolk, to be scrambled. <laughs> After I'm done with you your whole life, no, I said, if, if, you, if you can't take the heat, you should just change the channel before I make you an example for any other robber trying to knock on my castle. I like my white folk, I mean my egg yolk, to be scrambled. After I'm done with you, your whole life will be shamble. He said, whoa, I was just asking you if you're hot under there. I said, where did the nation and children at? Don't ask Dr. Muhammad Haji, not me. Because then I was for sure knew he was talking about if I was very beautiful under this. Because he want to know more about me. When they don't know you, they want to know more about you. So the other reason why I decided to have a rap career at 50 plus is because they told me I can't. What is one thing you don't tell a Somali lady? You can't. You cannot or you can't, we're gonna get deeper. What is one thing you cannot tell a Somali lady? Because the moment you say you can't, she will say, like Obama, yes we can. Where do you think Obama got that? from Hawa Haji. I was his ghost writer, he didn't give me credit. Just like Drake, he steals all his lyrics from Somali boys. Abti, really? You know what I told that guy? I said, what yeah? Dahir Aubrey, you know? I call him Dahir because he might as well be Somali if he's teaching, taking our lyrics from our boys and not giving them credit. So I call Drake Aubrey Dahir Aubrey because he might as well be one of us. And he's kind of like, look like a Somali, you know? But because I'm a 
in America and I feel like I'm safe because I made it over the border? Because if I didn't make it over the border, now I can't be kicked out. And you know, the person I wrote this song about is not here in the White House anymore. So I'm going to show you a track that I made. It's called a diss track. So when you are a rapper, I used to do underground rap. And then that's how I took over the rap scene at 50 plus. Because in the 90s, when we listened to Two Bag of Sugar, you know Two Bags of Sugar? I was, one day I was cleaning my son's room and I pressed Blay on his boombox player. And then I hear, out of nowhere, I used to think the book, this is before I became rapper, I was judgmental as a Somali lady, you know. Now we're all on the YouTube. But I used to listen, think he was listening to some sort of garbage, but then I heard, Lady. Don't you know you are appreciated? But no one above you, sweet lady. Then I said, this two bags of sugar, he's a so sweet, really. He's a barri. My son, Sumatrahachi, is a barri. If he listened to two bags of sugar. Then I did in Somali lady fashion, I studied everything that two bags Shakur did. This is my journey to hip hop. The second song I heard, guess what it was? It was a hair that, no, not hit him up, no, no, no. That was later. That was later. It was a haired up, almost. Haired up. You got to keep your hair up. Ooh, child. Things are gonna get easier. You got to keep your hair up. Ooh, child. Anyways, the reason why that was legendary is my head was low because I raised two bad kids on my own. I should have got the single mother award of the year, but I got disqualified because I actually have a husband. <laughs> Can I say that one more time? I should have got the single mother award of the year, but I got disqualified. Why? Because I actually have a husband. And I have a neighbor named Phil Philo. She's the one, when I was about to receive the award in the award ceremony, because there's actual award ceremony in Canada for the Single Mother Award of the Year. She came, and I've never seen Phil Phil run in my life. She's my biggest hater, by the way. Any rapper has a hater. Every rapper, Biggie Smalls, Two Bag Shakur, you know Biggie Smalls, Oxymoron. I'm a level six ESL holder. What is he trying to do? Who is he trying to confuse? Biggie Smalls? Which one are you? What are you? Are you big or are you small? I don't get it. And now, lately, the new one, the ugly one, Little Wayne? Little Wayne? Do you know what little means? It means little in English. Ladies, do you know what Wayne means big in Somali? It means big in Somali. Is he little or is he big? I don't get it. It's another biggest, smallest. I'm just saying, it's not easy. People wonder why I say it's not easy. Here I am, I graduated top of my class level six and little Wayne and Biggie Small is trying to trick me. It's not easy. But I figured them out, don't worry. R.I.B. to the Biggie Smallest and little Wayne, he looked like a uh, cockroach trying to take a basketball picture. You look him up on the Google. If he's, if he's handsome to you, that's your taste. Dr. Mohammed Haji, even now, he's 50 plus, he's still handsome. So I know a good looking guy when I see one. Sorry, but Abdullahi at the door, that's a good looking guy right there. <laughs> mashallah, say mashallah. mashallah. Say mashallah. <laughs> one time for your mind, mashallah. <laughs> but to get back to where I was going with the original story before I went on a tangent, you know my English is very, very productive. It's very big, it's very wide, it won't fit. Beyonce said that, but I don't like that lady. She's, she's naked all the time. She goes against my values. I'm heavily dressed, she's barely dressed. And that's what sells. That's why I had to go underground hip hop. Because if I come on, first of all, two things. If the other Somali ladies knew I was rapping for a living, 
they wouldn't take it. They would have said, well, you know Phil Philip. She used to hide my mixtapes. <laughs> it is what it is. Haters always going to be hater. But haters are necessary because they're the ones who keep track of our progress. If you want to know how you're doing, ask your biggest hater. They follow you on everything. They know your statistics before you know your statistics. And then they tell other people, you know what she did? They don't know this day and age. Any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> Ask Donald Trump. It's huge in his words. Speaking of Donald Trump, I wrote a song about him and now that I safely made it across the border, that was the point of the whole story. I wrote the diss track, it was a Drake, Dahir Aubrey Barity. And I want you all to hear it because I never released it because at the time he was president and I was afraid he might tweet about me <laughs> at 3 a.m. Yeah. And I will be banned. Yeah. And how will I meet all of you? 40, I don't know how many years later. I can't do the math. I'm level six ESL holder. I'm not good with the math. But anyways, can you drop, drop it and I will, you can watch it there and I will lip sing because I'm 50 plus, my lungs ain't what they used to be. Back to back, how I had you versus Donald Trump. Donald Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until the United States declares war on Islam. Donald Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out one man what's going on. Oh man, oh man. Not again. He's on CNN. I learned the game from Diane Aubrey. You can never check me. Back to back like me and Goran, but they cannot jump me. Back to back like there is a bastard in our houses. Back to back like a Somali man and his spouses. I said it, not face it all. Donald, you heard you have a problem with my religion. When I look back, I'm not be glad I gave this attention. It's been weighing heavy on my conscience. Your political agenda straight nonsense. They gonna say how I had you the straight and say. How I had you go back to where you came. What are y'all Donald? Don't make me buy double double for John McCain. All right, B. Your political agenda is really whack. You try to tell Muslims to wear a badge. I'm not really sure what we did to make you mad. But you can't act like Hitler trying to take that back from him. Boom! Calm down. Don't make me tell you again. This was Bush how it has you to put the paper to the bend. Yo, Donald. Hey, Donald. What are ya? Before I leave, is that your real hair or your girl's weave? Which African lady did you go see? And because you're a politician, this you do it for free, I said, oh. Muslim women rapping is kind of crazy. You get embodied by a Somali lady. I went to Barney and voted Justin Trudeau. I wondered which American voted for you, though. My flow will have you lost in the Sugo. Shout out to all the Somali ladies in the Ayuta. I said in the Ayuta. From sunrise to sunset, they go back to back. Islam promotes beef, so just deal with that. I got five daily prayers, they go back to back. Back to back. I said back to back. There is no time for terrorist attack. Islam promotes beef, Islam promotes beef, so just deal with that. They do deal with that. Islam promotes beef. So just deal with that. Did they deal with that land? So just deal with that. Did they deal with that? He said it's, it's complicated. That's my life. It's complicated. The other thing I want to discuss with all of you is that why I look up to two bags of sugar more than my own husband is because he's so sweet, really. He's barley, right? When people acknowledge your pain that you went through, you start to fall in love with them. You start to idolize them, which is very wrong in Islam. That's why I kind of like 
I'm not a rubber anymore, I'm retired. Because I was shaking my booty a lot. <laughs> and one thing that I know is you can always repent. Young people, don't think your mother and father didn't shake their booty. <laughs> She's dying of laughter. She knows what she did. She knows what I saw her 35 years ago. The point of that story is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's just so merciful, really. Habiba Ali, I heard her earlier, she said that Allah saved her life. Well, I'm the number two person that Allah saved their life. Because with the underground hip hop, I was meeting people like Eminem. You know, in Eight Mile, when he said, Mom, spaghetti? Who do you think made the spaghetti? There was a vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti, it was mine. <laughs> and now in my life, I'm steady. I stopped the hip hop, but I do freestyle rap because the young people, they still don't believe. And I'm not, you know, share. I'm not gonna say, do you believe? No, I'm not share. I'm how had you. So I tell the young people, if you wanna battle me, then come. Because just like that white boy that I said, Wariahe, Wariahe, you don't want to battle. He's a snack like a apple. I'm a full course meal. He's a Costco sample. I just posted something on Instagram. I was in front of one of our, the, you know, simple immigration. I was just getting to know Oche. And these little kids, they were this small, all of them. They, they pressured me. I got high blood pressure, decar, you know. They said, how had you, you don't have bars. I said, excuse me, that's all I have. So, one of the lines that I said was, I got the rap game like Sambusa, so I just perfected. I'm at the top, just as I expected. Time is lag, so I just invested. It ended with a uh, straight jepsi, because how a haji's got bars, no hapsi, which means I just punked you off, but I'm not going to jail for it. Anyways, comedy and laughter is medicine, so if you don't want to go to counseling, please laugh. I laugh at my own bane, I laugh at Dr. Mohammed Haji's face, I laugh at Filfilo when she tries to hate on me because she can never be me. Anybody who hates on you want to be you. But can somebody be you? Because we're all different. I'm not a hater. I just want to tell her and remind her there's only one Hala Haji. Period. Debit. So I think the last thing that I want to share with all of you is a freestyle rap about all of you. Because I know that Mama Sarah, who gave us this place, she said, you don't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell out of here at a certain time. Are we almost at eight o'clock? They say black people don't watch the time. Because of 50 plus years in the game, I can feel when my time is up. If you did battle rap, it's a blood sport, it's not easy. You get a few minutes, the other guy gets a few minutes, you're done. But before that, I want to share a poem that I'm not going to... Can I say who wrote it? Yeah. I want this boy, at some point in this year, I'm leaving Seattle on Sunday, please get him on a stage because he sent me something that almost made me cry. And I don't cry. I haven't cried since 1992. <laughs> to make Hawa Haji cry, Nuri Yisri. I'll tell you why uh, later, why I didn't cry since 92. But if you know what happened in 91, you'll understand what happened in 92. I never ran that fast in my life. And then they say, we can't go to the gym. We're like Abdi Bile, all of us.
And you know, he couldn't even have read it. He showed it to me earlier. I said, what I have? Send it via the WhatsApp. You know what we do as Somali lawyers. There's nobody who can send WhatsApp messages faster than a 50 plus Somali lawyer. Because as Somali people, we are resilient and we use laughter as medicine. But this is what he said. This is a mother's question. My dear children, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me in despair? Why are you killing each other without any care? Can't you see the wickedness that lurks in the air? Don't you fear death? Don't you feel it near? The bane of my children, is that what I hear? 28 plus years of lingering war, will that ever stop? The tears that drips down to my heart, will it wash away the stain? How can you not feel your sibling's bane? The bower you're killing, for what has it gained you? Is it me or am I going insane? The beast that we had, would it ever be regained? The love that we had, will it ever be reclaimed? The beauty that we had, will it ever be rebuilt? I have been waiting and waiting. Will my children ever return? This is your mother calling. Can't you hear me crying? When I am on my final breath, will you all revive me? Or will I die with an agonizing bane without you around me? My final questions are, have you ever loved me? Have you ever cared for me? If the answer is yes, when will you show me? I'm dying to know when you will save me. <laughs> Abdullahi, everybody, everybody give it up for Abdullahi. Sorry, sometimes I can speak perfect English when I get inspired. But honestly, whatever made you write that, and it's the code of Lulia today, the beauty of your faces, she's crying because she knows that there's no gain with killing. There's no gain, it's always lose, lose. I don't need to talk to big daddy entrepreneur to know that zero plus zero is zero. L O double S, loss. So I'm even more inspired to leave you with the freestyle. You can repeat after me because I want to teach you ladies and people how to rap like me. <laughs> One to the two, three to the four. One to the two, three to the four. It's how I had you here, I don't fall on the floor. One time for your mind, and one time for your soul. Rapping is like poetry, it never get all. Please, one time, just say it with me. It's not easy being me or how I had G. It's not easy being me or how I had G. Thank you, Seattle, for your time. I love you.